Here it is, my brothers and sisters. Shalom Rastafari. Here's another psalm. Another psalm for days like these. You know, these, this storm they call Irene. You understand? It's most likely one of many storms. It's, it's the beginning of things. That's the scene that we're coming into the, the, 20, the 2012 time. And um, all of the so-called predictions or pronostications or in some cases prophecies point to this whole change of weather patterns. Because the Almighty says in the, in the last days, in the end times, he will bring back that evil system that's, that's symbolized by a man or a person, the man of sin and Satan, that he will bring down this system, you know what I'm saying, without hands. And also in the prophetic word, he speaks of storms. We might be able to get into some of the specific areas of scripture where he speaks about such storms, you know what I'm saying. However, this, this psalm here, Psalm 46, is... Uh, Appropriate for times like this. Oh, this is my ab. Or what do I Sahadu amlat to the chief musician for the sons of 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 Kore, of Korah, a song upon Alamot, upon Alamot. Jah or God, if you please, is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not, therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river that streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttereth his voice. The earth melteth. Yisrael Gita Gizyarihir, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Tabaot is with us, with I and I. The God of Yaakov is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of Yahweh, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yeserawit gieta egezi abihir lotu subhat, the Lord of hosts. Yahweh Tzabaot is with us, is with I and I. The God of Jacob, Yaikov Amlak, Amlaka Yaikov, is our refuge, Selah. Now this psalm right here, the part that, that, that caught my attention was like from the earthquake, the time of the earthquake, seeing that we, seeing like that we felt it, you understand, and we, we recognize that it must be an earthquake, then that was confirmed. I think I, I, I told my earthly, and she said, uh, no, nah, it's, it's not. Maybe it's the guy next door, you know, do, doing some work or something like that. I said, nah, can't, it can't be that guy next door. You know, he don't, have, he don't have the power to move the house like that. And if he could move the house like that, then, you know, I guess we're going to <laughs> we're gonna have to get out sooner, you understand, than a little bit later. You know what I'm saying? But no, it was confirmed as an earthquake. And mm, the 5.9, 6.0, 5.8, you know, they could go through the numbers and the, and the statistics. They said since 18, um, what was it, 97 or something like it, like that, they started to talk about different dates. But one of them was in the 1800s and everything. And this psalm came to my heart, you know. It came to my remembrance. But I have to say, not somewhat perfectly, like according to the traditional King James um, reading of it. And going over it here, it's like reminding me of what my heart was grasping for. That's what we say that scriptures, when used properly, 
is good psychic protection. This is why it says to, to, to love them for your heart. In other words, we memorize and commit to memory these scriptures, not just so we can say we memorized it, but in times of need can call it accurately to memory, you understand, and therefore also to whatever action, you understand, whether internal, firstly, what internal action we have to do in our heart and mind. So when the psalm says, do not fear, you understand, it basically means do not fear, you know, is don't fear, you understand, but then one has to kind of really meditate it, because what is fear? And, and some people don't acknowledge when they do fear. You know, like when, when, when people are scared or something like that, a lot of people be getting into this kind of um, um, psychological um, dis, uh, disposition. I don't know what you would call it. Mm. Mm. It's called denial. You know what I'm saying? They, they will be with the crocodiles in denial. You understand? They they they're in this denial because they say I'm never I'm I'm not afraid of nothing. Okay, that's a good braggadocio. That's pride, right? Like the crown of pride of Ephraim, but that's not really true. And if you are uh, maybe you don't want to tell somebody else what you're afraid of or fear, but if you don't go into the holy place in prayer and meditation to the God and Father of our Black Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Getachin, and really work those things out then you'll never be able to overcome when the so-called real fear or the real situation comes along. See, in the counterfeit churches, they don't really teach this. They teach a kind of a hyperventilating and a kind of make-believe. Oh, you, you say this, I say the same thing even more than you. You understand? Okay, I, I, I hear you. You understand? But then when in the real world, you hear other things because the spirituality is not consistent with their inner, with what's going on in the inner, in the innermost of the inner. Mm. So in the metaphysical school of Christ, of the black Christ, should we say, and we say that for a point of reference, you understand, so you know automatically we're, we're not coming along to continue lying to you as the counterfeit Christians have lied to you, period. But we're not going to overhype just the racial, you understand, oneness or likeness and, and say that's our righteousness, as we did teaching the other day, on the Pata and the Father and the Pata, we touched on the fact of um, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Our righteousnesses, the Bible says, is like filthy rags. You ever had a filthy rag? You could have thrown it away by now, but you ever had a filthy rag? You understand? You ever had a filthy rag? You know what filthy rag looks like? You understand? If it's your filthy rag, you know, you'd be like, that's filthy because of me. That's all my filth on. Now imagine that your righteousness, right? Your righteousness, the righteousness that you purport to have, this this, this self righteousness, is just like a filthy rag. You understand? It's it's it's, it's like a like you said, a butt rag. You know what I mean? You wipe your butt with it. That's how they do it in ancient Rome. They had like one thing that everybody wiped their butt with. Uh, don't want to go there. But you know what I mean? That's that's what one's righteousness in the sight of the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus. That's what it's like. You know, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a filthy rag. You know what I mean? So these are, these are like the sweet meditations that in our prayer time, once we understand the importance and the proper way to really pray and even meditate, you understand, and how to utilize this word known as the B-I-B-L-E in its real practical and applicative sense. Not just trust him because he's going to give you some money. Well, money is the easy thing. You know what I'm saying? But when you're going to ask him about your soul? You know what I mean? Once we ask him, if I say, there's some money things here that if you pray this and do this, people run out and do it. People do that all the time. They go to the so-called religious store, you know, the quote-unquote religious store, right? And they go there to buy candles and different things to do kind of, you know, read the kind of fifth, uh, the sixth and, and seventh book of Moses and do other kind of stuff and against the enemies. And they, they do all kind of witchcraft. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, they trust him for those things. But they never, do they, do they ever do any witchcraft to make them a, a kinder person like the Christ? Do they ever do anything like that? Well, you really can't, but do they even consider, like, I'm a bad person. I need to write my heart. I need to burn some candles to make, my, make, me, make, 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 my, make my heart better. You know what I'm saying? Or make me a better person. You know what I mean? They don't, they don't do that. So you see that these things are mostly used and only used for very selfish reasons. That kind of spiritualism or, or magic or 
or, you know, they can call it witchcraft or different things, even though a lot of true things have been called witchcraft, spiritualism, and magic, too. You know what I'm saying? This is why one needs to gain discernment, and we begin with the scripture. So here, beginning with this scripture right here, considering this storm that is should be either right on top of us now or might be, hopefully, it's passed over already, you understand? But it might not have passed over, you understand? So we want to keep our, our, our psychical, you understand? Our psychical protection. You know, you hear these winds and you see, you, see, you see what happens to other people, you understand? You see big cathedral falling down. So you figure, like, yeah, my house is sturdy. My house is a, is a what, what people say sometimes, is, is a, is a, is a, um, it's a brownstone. I got, I'm living in a brownstone, so I don't have to worry about that. And then you don't want to come back the next day and see, isn't that their watch on their hand underneath that boulder there? They were in a brownstone. You know what I'm saying? So we need to get psychic protection. Because remember, remember Petros? Remember Peter, the disciple Peter? Remember the whole walking on the water scene? That's a very interesting scene, but there's a, a lot of other aspects of that walking on the water that we really need to understand. That when Peter went out there and he walked on water, he walked on the water because he, quote, believed or he admitted he had reverential trust, you know what I'm saying, coupled with a hatred of evil. That means to doubt him, you know what I'm saying, not just trust in him, but to doubt him is evil. You see what I'm saying? So, so to doubt him, a hatred of evil is not just a hatred of, oh, that guy, he's an evil guy, I hate that guy. That's how most people use it in the immature, you know what I'm saying, the spiritual mechanics in an immature sense, you know what I'm saying, because they do not understand, rightly divide the word of truth. But um, hatred of evil also means that if I'm walking with him in faith, and I'm growing in faith, and I'm applying what I can to my daily walk and my daily life, right, and then doubt comes in, and a doubt seems plausible about him, you know what I'm saying, about his word, and you begin to, that is that is evil. So you have to be be quick on your wit to recognize, oh, that's... See, what happened with Peter walking on the water was that he walked on the water. You understand? He asked Christ, can I come out to you? And Christ said, yes, you may. And he came out there. And he was walking on the water. But what happened? What is the key thing that happened? This happens to all of us in, in, in different ways at an immature spirituality level before we grow up. You understand? It, the wind blew. The wind blew. It was not what happened. The wind had blown. The wind blew, right? And and and, and he and he feared. It said that I think Peter feared. He doubted and feared, and those two kind of go together. In fact, um, the old um, um, apocryphal books say that um, doubt is the daughter of the devil. So you know, when you're doubting, when somebody's doubting, we always can say, "Why are you effing with that that witch?" Maybe say for the B version, like why are you messing with the devil's daughter? The devil's daughter is doubt. And not doubt in men and people in the world, but doubt in the Almighty and the truth that he reveals to you. Even though it may flip your whole world paradigm upside down, that just shows how much you've been living upside down. You understand? And and and, and, and wrong side, not right. You over so this psalm right here, it says that first of all it says that God Right? God is our refuge and strength. Now, if we were to do a Targum, and we're not going to go through a complete Targum here, uh, Targum, the Jews call it Targum. Ethiopically, according to His Majesty, we say Targum. If we do a Targum, it's an interpretation of it. That means if we go to the Hebrew, we most likely would find that it either has El, like El, or Elohim. I'm trying to see if, my, if, if the Tehillim is, is out right now. I have the Tehillim here. Probably go through another time. It could either say El, it could either say Ha El, which means the true God, or it could say Elohim, which is sometimes translated as gods, but it means the, the elemental powers, like the seven spirits that go before his face, right? The, the true Elohim, right? It says that God is our refuge and our strength. Now, refuge, what is refuge? We touched on this week in our sabbatical teaching, show 15. We touched on refuge, that they're supposed to be ret refuge cities. And so when anybody murdered somebody, or killed somebody rather, because murder is more premeditated, but anybody killed somebody, and they didn't intend to kill somebody, that, that person, it wasn't that enmity, they didn't have issues with that person, you know what I'm saying? And if they wanted to escape the blood libel, in other words, the consequences that the family might decide to take against that, you killing our relatives, you understand? They would flee to a refuge city. 
So we were commanded in um, uh, or read the Dagim to build firstly three refuge cities in the land. And as our territory expands, then we could add three more to the number of refuge cities. And this would be so that the the one who who had caused the death of somebody, not maliciously, could whose life could be speared and they could flee to these cities of refuge. Now people say, Lord, why would they have to have a refuge city? I mean, such and such. There's a lot of reasons why. But what's interesting when you study the idea of refuge cities, right? Refuge cities now connect with the idea we have here in Psalm 46. The refuge cities are the original idea from Old Testament of church. And where the church in the Old Testament is a type of a refuge city where those who fled out of the, we could say, the bondage of, of, of the so-called Judaism, and the Phariseeism of that day, should we say, the Phariseeism, so-called Judaism of the day of Christ, they fled out, you understand, from that. That means that they didn't partake in the temple worship generally because that was controlled by the Pharisees and the Sadducees of Sanhedrin. And they also, in their local synagogue worship, things were difficult, especially if they acknowledged the, our black Lord, Jesus Christ. You understand? And this is one of the main areas we can see the racial paradigm also, Jeremiah Wright said it right, that Jesus was a poor black boy, and he was, he was, he was killed or murdered and, and crucified and lynched by the Romans, by white people. So even then, the paradigm of this coming white supremacy, but the, the crucifixion of Christ was really the beginning, you know saying, was the beginning of this in a major way. This is really now shows the rise, because they have rejected now the Son of God, the Bain Ha Elohim. They rejected the Messiah. There, there are punishments written for such rejection. So the Almighty, though he may have had mercy and spared some, still had to be just. He couldn't allow this transgression to go, you know, saying un, unpunished or unaddressed. So from that coming out of 70 AD, we come down to 1530s and 1600s and slavery. You understand? Know and also coming forward from that same paradigm, we still are struggling with some of the root and primary issues. You understand the root and primary issues like Greco-Romanism versus Hebrewism. In other words, those blacks who want to live in the whitewashed image, Pichiello here and all the rest of that madness, you understand, instead of living in their own either African but more than just general African in their Hebrew, you understand, in the image of God's covenant people. So it's important for us to say that, and that being said, when we approach the scriptures, it's a hundred times more beneficial for us to be able to acknowledge the truth about who is speaking here and what it's really speaking about. Because this set not only just grooves in our mind, but also our energy, whatever energy, the energy field around us, because the spiritual law is like attract like. You know what I'm saying? This doesn't mean that every time something happens, you're going to blame that, oh, you caused it on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Although, in principles, if we can isolate and recognize what principles are truly working in a given situation, usually we can make that scientific judgment and see the knowledge of God, you know what I'm saying, in that. You know what I'm saying? Such as when the building fell on all the people, the, the Siloam or something like that tower, and the disciples came to Yeshua and said, is it because these people were the most wicked people? You know, some thought this, some thought that. They were looking at what went on and say, oh, he caused that because of that, something over and obvious. And Christ responds to, it's almost like saying, why is the deaf person deaf or the blind person blind or the lame person lame or the, or the so-called midget or midget? Oh, something that parents did, you know, saying that caused that. But Christ responded and said, no, it's none of that, but it's so that God gains the glory, to God be the glory. So we should meditate that, too, that sometimes we shouldn't always be looking for a kind of causative, you understand, in that sort of narrow range sense. But where we should begin is with ourselves. See, it's key to begin with ourselves. You see, because... The community can only come together, this community of faith that we're seeking to build. You understand? If the individuals take individual responsibility, that means each of us for our Torah studies and readings 
and in meditation and prayer and learning and growing and applying that which we are able to. You, you see what I'm saying? It may not be trying to do everything like a checklist, but applying that which is within our grasp. And what's initially should be in our grasp is our own thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions. So when the Bible says to us in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's some questions we got to ask before we can apply anything about it. The individual, each of you are individually. And recognizing it's a wisdom key, it's a principle, and it's also showing us a certain step, steps of, 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 of sentience or consciousness, Christ consciousness, it says, be not conformed to the world. So what is conformity? What is the world? And this is why we give thanks to all those people who have done all these videos talking about the so-called New World Order and, um, you know, talking about this world global system because that helps us, excuse me, that helps us tremendously. That helps us tremendously to explain and explicate and also use third-party um, sources and information, you understand? So you won't say that, oh, I'm just saying this and just using this to make it back up what I'm saying, but you can clearly see what the world is. And what many of them fail to do, what a lot of these programs fail to do is this. They fail to um, give the devil his due. They fail to really state that um, it's a Greco-Roman white supremacist world system. Though sometimes they may touch on Rome, they may touch on Greek in passing, but they fail to uh, like pin the tail on the donkey. You know what I mean? They fail to pin the tail on the donkey and basically say what it is. It comes out of that whole white supremacist paradigm. You know what I'm saying? And once you can understand that, then at least you can identify what is the world. So when the Bible talks about the end of the world, it's clear from scriptures it's not talking about the end of the world like a lot of these false prophets and corner store, you know, or street corner, um, you know, kind of stuff. Not, not like a lot of that. That's a part of that old system which kind of refuses to, in a sense, die, which refuses to be born again or just, just fade away. This is what happened to the Israelites in the wilderness. It came to that point in time when a new generation had to rise up and to recognize, first of all, who they were, where they're at, how they got here, and what's what, and about what it was the better way, the right way. You know what I'm saying? Not to turn to the left or the right. Who cares the, the Democratic or Republican? When you really overstand, you know what I mean? When you really overstand. So that is not to be all political or whatnot like that, but um, that's just to illuminate a little bit more about some of the basic steps that each of us have to take if this word called scriptures is really effective so that one can give their own testimony. See, one can have their own testimony when they really see the, the Holy Spirit working in and through them and really making them a new person, a better person, and come out of a lot of those um, those psychological prisons, you see, because not the physical prison. They, didn't put the, they took the chain off our, our our feet and hands and put it on our brain. You know what I'm saying? We all know that song. Those of us who know we love that song. They took the chain off of our our feet and stuff and they put it on our brains or our, our, our psyches, our psychological and even our spiritual state, the whitewashed Jesus, Caesar Borgias, the Caesar's Christ is one example of that spiritual chain that they put there. Now the other nigga, nigga this and nigga that, you know, that becomes a part of the psychological chain. And Willie Lynch is, I think, the best ideal paradigm to begin one's study in really getting a better, a better gnosis, a better knowledge of it. Because if one reads that and says, oh, that's not true, Knowing what they know, seeing what they see, they deserve whatever they get. You understand? Because they refuse, they reject it. You understand the truth. But he is our refuge and strength. So the refuge, the refuge city, the churches. So the idea of church, I, I, I sort of put out there, the idea of church. You understand? The idea of church is very, is very important. Now, um, it says, uh, therefore, here's the key. We, therefore, will we, King James reading is, therefore, will we, Will not we, will not we fear? You know, we say we will not. They say, therefore will, the will, not, not, the will, but not in this way, will not we fear. 
You know what I'm saying? So we will say we will not fear. You know what I'm saying? But the idea basically is essential. Is, 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 is essentially the same. Though the earth be removed. Now, how many people, when they had this earthquake thing go on, you know, actually ran for, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, they said people out the Pentagon got up and gone. You know what I mean? And you're like, but aren't you supposed to be able to resist like a nuclear attack and all these things and, and so-called, quote, save us? You know what I'm saying? Well, they're not just saviors. They were trying to save themselves. It's very clear. It should be clear. And it says, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You know, brothers and sisters, I think we're really living in times where we're going to see stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we, we, we don't be in stuff like that. You know, and, and, and should we be in it, don't fear. You know what I'm saying? We're a whole mountain. But see, this is where the earthquake is. You see, an earthquake is moving of underground mountains. There are mountains. There's, the earth is a big place. The earth got a lot of stuff going on in it. You know what I mean? But there are mountains underneath the earth. There's mountains underneath the water. It's talking about the islands, too. You understand? So that many of the islands will be, will, will be no more. Montserrat. When Montserrat erupted, that was the first sign. That was, the, I think, it was about 1991, 92, or sometime around then. You understand, but it was in the 90s, I believe, when Montserrat erupted. You understand? That was the first key sign. Almost a whole island was devastated. A whole population almost had to leave. And, and I think some went to England or whatnot like that. Maybe some came to America and everything. But this can happen. Even recently with Jamaica, there was a storm coming at the last minute. The Almighty, the Almighty um, showed some mercy. Yeah, showed some mercy. Make sure it's not coming down around here it probably is you know because this that we say this old house but still we can't see it you know if we got to rebuild or do what so be it you know um but anyway um it says uh be carried into the sea it says though the waters there of roar and be troubled the waters the waves of the sea be troubled it says though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof say lot now, that Selah is like an a interlude. It's like, let's meditate this. If one needs to pray, pray, but let's meditate this. You know, it's like a quiet meditation in the, in the temple chanting, in the congregational worship. When you get to that Selah point, it was the old Hebrew instructions of where, like, where, like, when we had a, a session, in the session, right? And it's where the instrumental, you know, where the instrumental come in. You know, like where the DJ might say something and then the instruments will come in, you know, and one's kind of meditate, the bass might come up, it's the instrumental portion. And then after some period of time, you understand, um, the DJ or the singer will come back in with the rest of the, of the, of the, the kedase or the wadase, the praise. This, 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 this is how the psalms were used in this sense when you see those selahs. For an individual, that would be a meditative point. Point. So, like, I read through it explaining some parts of it, but one read through it, when it gets to that Selah part, they can even go over the text again and really meditate, you know, meditate upon the meaning. But what's interesting about this psalm is that it puts in the contrast. It shows something going on over here. Mountains trouble, the wind, the, the roaring of the sea, all this stuff going on. And then... It, it breaks after the Selah in verse 4 to say there is a river. So speaking about a river, could it be speaking about the Hapeh? Could it speak about the Hapi or the Nile River? You understand? Which goes through, through, through upper and lower Egypt, upper and lower Ethiopia to the very, to the very we could say, to the very uh, foundation of Africa down in the south to what they renamed um, Lake Victoria after the Empress of India, the Queen of, of Britannia. But there is a river that streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, who is streams, the streams of that river. Now what we're seeing here is the Zion. It's speaking about Zion or Zion. But in Revelation and prophecy, here is speaking of the African Zion or Holy Ethiopia or Imperial Ethiopia. And continental Ethiopia, what we know as Ethiopia today, or at least south, southern Ethiopia, because northern Ethiopia is what you call Sudan. So today, northern Ethiopia is under the control of the Arabs and the Mohammedans. One portion of the people freed themselves up, you understand? Know and that's the youngest African nation that happens to be a Christian nation on Ethiopia's border. 
You understand? That's what they call Southern Sudan. But now Northern Sudan is, is, is where Khartoum is right there. But it's not speaking about that city of God, but speaking about Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa in this sense is this African Zion city of God in the prophetic sense. So it says that they are streams that obviously are connected with the river that, that shall make glad or happy. In other words, people can dwell in this region, you understand, in comfort and ease because God has his very streams there. And even the whole region was also, if you go back in time and some of the recent earthquakes that's been going on around the world, there's been other events also in Ethiopia, um, lava events in some regions, and, and, and birds, uh, fish coming out of the sky, you understand, in some region. Where some, some interesting biblical kind of um, miracles or scenarios have been going on in Ethiopia. But anyway, it says that God, it says that the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, the holy place of the tabernacle, excuse me, tabernacles, that means the dwelling places or the tents, the dwelling place. Now, Ethiopia tend to have like a three-fold system, which is a biblical system, too. America adopted that and had it as executive, legislature, and judiciary. In the Ethiopic Hebrew biblical system, we have the king, you understand? We have the priest, and then we have the arash, or what would be called the, um, the farmer. You understand, the farmer, or for us as Rastafari in the 21st century, the farming communes and collectives, the farming communes and collectives, or what we call green Christianity. There's a teaching that we did. I, I think we released it. Hopefully, if we didn't, we will on green Christianity. Brothers and sisters interested, if you are just, if you hear this and you're interested, go to our website and just ask for green Christianity and... Um, we might even send it out. Um, it's, it's, it's just a CD. We, we, we might eat the poster, John, right now. You know, one can give freely. You know, but if you're, if you're interested in that particular reasoning on green Christianity, we might be able to send you some paperwork on that. But just let us know. You understand? Because maybe nobody's hearing this. Maybe we're only very few. So if there's very few of those we will, you know, communicate with. If it's, if it's others, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... Here it's shown in contrast the city of God on one hand and then another place in the earth where there's trouble. You understand? It said that God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. In other words, God shall help her and those that, in a sense, do the right thing. You understand? And are quick to make those amends repent, you know, um, um, conform themselves, transform themselves, conform themselves to the image of the black Christ, but transform themselves by the degrees of their mind, but not to get out of the world conformity right there. So it says the heathen rage. Now with such an exodus movement as is underway, even as we speak, many people, some people have already, have already moved forward. Different peoples have moved forward because remember what we're talking about when we're talking about repatriation or exodus. And that's what we have to understand because people ask us in line of Jewish society, um, um, when are we going? What do we have in mind? If we could have gone yesterday and broadcast this from there and said, hey, we're going to show you around what's here. It's not like, like they show you in all those starving people videos from Africa, you understand, that we would do so. But it's families must come together, you understand, families of faith, you understand, who are already in the covenant, covenanting with one another, you understand, and this is the only way they can build the basis of trust the trust basis for ones and ones to be able to say, I'm going to take all of my, whatever little bit of lot that I might have, my family funds and finances, and invest a significant portion or all in a certain community building in Africa, preferably Ethiopia, as, as like a kibbutz, like a kibbutz sort of communal dwelling. So these families are invested in that. That means that, that legally, you understand? They have an equal share. And the, but spiritually, the prerequisite is covenant. Because some people may have the money but not have the heart. You understand? So you might like, get yourself in some very difficult, tricky sort of things. And I want you to say that we didn't warn you about that. So it's, it's families must covenant. Now, people say, what about individuals? Well, if you're an individual, that means you're by yourself, you don't got no family, whatnot, no, so forth and so on. Well, then you can, you can work, you can beg, borrow. I wouldn't suggest steal, but, 
you know, they go borrow, you understand, and um, get on a plane and get over there. Period. Start a new life. You, you see what I'm saying? But you have some individuals who are spiritually lazy because they still are afraid. They got phobias. Like, how often I say, if I wasn't doing this particular work and knowing what I know, you understand? Um, therefore, there was no duty or responsibility. That's not holding I, but that I am honoring, you understand? Then, you know, then like I said, I'll be doing a video from, from over there. And say, come by and visit sometime. You know, when you're in the neighborhood, say, say salam to Tainayis Talim. You know what I'm saying? But that's, think about that, brothers and sisters, we've been asking about repatriation, so forth and so on. Listen, people say, well, what is there? Is there land or whatnot? What they say, they say uh, money talks and bullshit walks, in a sense. I'm not saying that's the most correct parable. That's not biblical or whatnot like that. But with the proper will, spirituality, the will, and the willingness to invest, and working with like-minded sort of individuals. You know, those things are minor. Those things are really, really minor things. You know what I'm saying? We have not heard the story of any who have repatriated, you know what I'm saying, or returned to Ethiopia, Africa, um, who wanted to return and were disappointed unless they went there under false ideas which were part of their own imagination. You know what I'm saying? And they wasn't really the people of the faith. You understand? Know because I've seen people go there together, you understand, know to, to, for visit and to sightsee or tour or something, come back, one person gets depressed, the other person is happy. You understand? Know so one is called and one is, you know, one is taken and one is left. I mean, it's kind of simple like that. You understand? Know so think about that because sometimes you may be in a crowd of folks who are just dissemblers. They may be just giving you all the bad side. Now, we're not saying there's no challenges in Ethiopia. There's challenges, there's challenges over here. At least we know what the challenges are over there. You see what I'm saying? So any sort of farming collective, you understand, that's based on faith, like a kibbutz, like Ayn, or Shilosha, you understand, or a couple of the other ones, will we'll, we'll make it. There's Jews, Israeli Jews, who are inspired by Rastafari and, and, and fortified by the basic principles of Judaism, you understand, who have set up their own living communities in this present time, much like their earlier forefathers, which is more spiritual, religious in its basis, and the message of Rastafari, the rhythm, the base, the message of Rastafari is their primary um, inspiration. We, so-called blacks, we'll talk about it, but then because we're still in that spell of Willie Lynch and that spell of the dollar bill, we'll talk about it. You understand that we might have enough put, pooling our resources together right now to do it. Even the little bit that we all have putting it all together. And we would say we. We're not saying thousands of people because I don't really see thousands of respondents in that sense. But in, in the in the in the in the tens, in the single digits, you know saying there may be five families who get along together and they're of the same mind. You know saying? And they remember I said investing a significant portion of one's resource. Money is money is money is money is money is money in this system. It's better and more advantageous to do it now or within this sort of time period that we're in right now than to think you're going to wait like 10 years or something like that after you get a super duper master's degree and you see there's other people who got more degree than you and they're out of work. You know what I mean? The system is broken. They told you already. So you can't say they didn't tell you. But the heathen, it says in verse 6, rage and the kingdoms will move. Of course the kingdoms will be moved. With large numbers of, 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 of individuals, particularly Hebrews and black folks, deciding to cut their losses in Babylon, right, and going to Africa, different parts of Africa, some may like Ghana, some may like Liberia, some go Nigeria, some may go South Africa, some go Rwanda, Kenya, Ethiopia, some may go to that newest Christian African nation, southern Sudan, you understand? Madagascar, did I leave out Madagascar, Cameroon? I mean, there's a, you know what I'm saying? It, it, but the main thing is this, you understand? When you look at the forecast, you understand? Their forecast in Babylon is dependent on exploiting, you understand, the bottom of the bottom. You understand, the poor and the ignorant and the want to be righteous, but their preachers are keeping them in a loop. You understand, they're keeping them in a loop-the-loop. -loop. You understand? 
the words of the wise should be sufficient, but the kingdoms the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth the earth melted. You understand? Now what's interesting is that the Lord of hosts is with us. This reminds me of a mighty well. That that these people who are able to sustain this as the remnant, the total fund, the black survivors, must have these spiritual, psychological attributes. You see, because the one is not grounded and founded on the rock, on the true word of the King of Kings and his Christ, then they can't really do anything. His Majesty already said that in the Mecca. He says, but with, with you, they'll be able to do all things. That with Christ, with, the, with our black Lord Jesus Christ, they'll be able to do all things. Without that consciousness, they're not going to be any good to themselves or anyone else. The God of Jacob, our ancestors, you understand, is our refuge. You understand? And it says, come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. Now, where we're going is not the desolations. Notice this. We are coming. And when we come and we're there, like Revelation says on that mountain, you understand, having the name of the Father and Son inscribed, in our frontal lobe, in our consciousness, we are beholding, because with this worldwide media, you could be in Africa and see, and, and see the big ones as, as, as they are. You know, you know, and, and it's going to be that way for, for some of us. Hopefully it will be that way for I and I and I. This is why this message is on I and I heart right now, because people ask us, what, the, what about repatriation? How to come about it? How to go about it? And what's been bothering me of saying, okay, let's go do it right now, is that we've seen other examples and studied other examples and say, why did these individuals fail at this? And why did those individuals surprisingly succeed at it? And it goes to, first of all, a faith base. You understand? Unless people have the same mind spiritually, then the little shit is going to throw the whole apple cart with all the beautiful red apples down and damage them and make them no good for the mercato, make them no good for market. Plain and simple like that. Now, he maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. You know, wars will cease if black people say, you know what, because black people are the main ones in the army, you understand, in, 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 in the military, it's, it's the black folks. We all know that World War II, if it wasn't for the black Tuskegee Airmen, that America would, would probably have lost. The Germans were the most superior, and the blacks were superior to the Germans. They even sunk destroyers. No white squadron ever sunk a German destroyer. The blacks did it. You know what I'm saying? The blacks did it. So it shows that even wars would end based on what we do. We, 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 we stay like a deer in the headlights and keep believing the lies. And things have been getting worse for maybe the last 20 years overall. A couple of people like Oprah and a couple of people won some awards and got some bling bling. Okay. But overall, the people who... Uh, the fans of these people are, 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 are drastically poorer than these same people they look up to in the same system that they're in. You see what I'm saying? In the same system that they're in. They're in the same system. So how come it works for them but it doesn't work for you? Because somebody is governing. The system is there's a hidden hand of the whole New World Order thing. Now, it, it breaks down. He, he maketh wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear and the sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. But here's the key, and here's the meditative link. Here's the practical meditative link in verse, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Now, this is not for ones to think that they are God in the sense that a lot of, you know, um, black folks have done previous to but is to recognize the I am consciousness, the Yahweh, the Eo, the Iu consciousness in us, in ourselves. That means that God is in us. So we don't have to go to this place to find God. We're not going to Ethiopia to find God. See, some people think that we're going to Ethiopia to find God. That's, that's not true. Or we're going to Africa to find God. No. I mean, we've had God. God has been with us all this time. You understand? Whether we've been fully faithful, well, the proof is in the pudding or what we got out of it, you understand? Or not, that's a whole different thing, but God is, God is with us. This is Tawahedo in one sense, and in the black sense in the Americas was the Negro spiritual, the church house. Before the plantation church came about and a plantation preacher, there was what was known as the church house. The church house, for lack of a better word, was, was, was original and pure bingy in that sense. It was pure bingy in the way that they worship, the way that they fellowship, the way that they also related as a community of people. But that was too dangerous for white supremacy because these Negroes 
would, would recognize, okay, we're in this captivity. But at a certain point, they will also stand up and defend themselves. You understand? Because they recognize that, yes, Jah has put me in your hand, but that's no way for you to do this and that and that. You know, I mean, it's one thing to serve you, you understand, in the captivity. You understand? It's another thing to be lynched and raped and beat and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, let's reckon, we Africans, we had slavery too. But nowhere in any slavery that Africans had, one tribe beat the next tribe or in the Bible time, did they ever do to a people over a long continuance what they've done to Negroes in the Americas, even to the present day. You understand? And the worst thing is they're lying to us. But anyway, the be still and know that I am God needs to be understood in the metaphysical sense of I am, understanding the I am or the, or the Yahweh. You understand that? A principle of Yah. You understand? From its root of to be or becoming. You understand? His master says that peace, Kadamawi Hala Salasi say that peace, is not a be or a is, it is a becoming. It is something that is becoming. He said that day to day there are different calculations, different things to weigh. Even, even prophetically in scripture, the truth remains the same, but how do we see this? And what in the Bible and, and, and the Holy Spirit, how is the Holy Spirit guiding us to understand what is before us, where we're at right now? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, this is fulfilled, God and us, when we rise up, when, when that uprising. You understand? It doesn't necessarily have to be a violent uprising. You understand? Right now, there are no real checks and balances designed that if black people decide to, to, to covenant with other black people and decide to get investment in Africa, and, and just like white people have houses all over the world or whatever, it doesn't mean you have to be a multi-billionaire. I mean, understand the economy. Look at the economic equation between a dollar over here and a dollar over there, and it should be a dull point. Plus, there's industry. You understand? African Americans of the right mind, righteous African Americans, you understand, therefore can use their skill set and their knowledge with proper discernment with different Africans in the continent where both parties benefit. You understand? Where both parties benefit. This is what your black leadership should have been telling you. You know what I mean? And, and some black leaders. Well, well, some blacks who have leadership potential, but remember, we already talked about the boule and the covenant of death, and you have to understand that's one reason why a lot of the majority of blacks don't really see it just yet. You know what I'm saying? Ones like Oprah can do limited things. Notice, limited things, but even she has put some investment in Africa. So you would think that if black people look up to Oprah, why don't they do the same thing? Because there's a, there's a whole mind change that has to go on. Most niggas are like, why should I do anything for no African? I, I, you know, like a love-hate because they don't know themselves. This, this, this is confusion. That's the Babylonian mentality. That's double-minded. On one level, they'll be like, Africa, you know, you know, when, when they're talking or arguing with the white man. Then among themselves, they're like, since we're Africans, why don't we? Then I know African. African, not my, uh, okay, fuck about African. You know what I mean? You know, you'd be like, but you're just telling, yeah, 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 because that's true. We're all from Africa, but I ain't no damn African. So why don't you argue with the white boy like I'm American? You didn't do that kind of shit. You, you went back to Africa, but you don't want to go back to Africa. See, that's part of the dis, this ease of mind. That's why we always put forward the, the new birth, and, and even it's necessary for us to cast out demons. This is part of what the, the word says. Because there's some people who have been saddled with these mentalities so long, you understand, they need to kind of like spiritual power. You understand? They need like almost, not an exorcist in that sense, but they need those powers to be cast out and cast them out with the truth. It's the truth, you understand, that begins to make that, make that change, make that turn. Some niggas be talking, I've been, I've been in this black conscious shit for a long time, but, but now you see their life, they're really doing it. They were into it as a head knowledge, you know, they were like, yeah, Africa, that's right, Africa. They use it as a rap. You know, they rap to a girl, like, yeah, Africa, baby, I know about Africa. I'm like Zulu, Shaka Zulu, you know Shaka Zulu? You know what I mean? <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? They use it as, as a kind of, uh, like, bait. But this song now concludes with the Lord of hosts is with us. You know what I'm saying? Which prophetically is the king of kings of Ethiopia, or Kedemar, the the first power of the Trinity. The God of Yaakov, the God of Jacob, is our refuge, Selah. Selah. So this is a very important psalm right here, not just for this um, not just for this uh, storm only, you know, not just for the storm only, but in the storm it says that there'll be a storm in the west. We're seeing that there'll be a storm in the west. 
and it seems like there's been bad weather. Have you noticed? Just keep getting worse, and it's been destroying things like crops and agriculture. And whenever I see that, I begin to think like, that means that they're not going to tell us beforehand. They're going to drop it on us like a bomb. But gradually, you see prices going up in everything. You see, and we don't, most folks don't have no garden. There may be community gardens, but now the city has gotten involved in that. So the city will actually have the main control of those community gardens. Yeah, it'll be the community garden, but it's not like your own garden. You know, like you go in your backyard, you got your own garden. And I don't really know if it's, if people, if we have enough time. One can think of doing that to say, okay, we'll do a garden next year. You understand? But once you consider everything that's going on right now, you know, because um, say it happens right now where this kind of crisis comes on, you understand? But still, it's, it's a consideration that needs to be thought of. So it's showing two, the, the view of two, two, two views. It, it can be interpreted prophetically according to the Targum of these storms that are battling against um, America from Katrina on now. You understand? And what is so very interesting is that if they didn't have satellite to really know where things are going to hit, you can imagine how many loss of lives, you understand, property and other things there would be. So that's a kind of a blessing in a sense, but it doesn't change the rulers of Babylon evil ways. So the Almighty has a certain celestial clock as well as there is a certain um, time of grace before the time of judgment. And we're moving rapidly into a time of judgment because the earth itself can only endure but so much. Think about it. Think about what the earth has endured. You understand? As a, even as a mother, because it is a mother in that sense of the equation. You understand what the earth has endured. And the prophecy even says that um, the commandment, the time will come to destroy those who destroy the earth. Now with all the news about what might happen might, big instances on might happen at ground zero and in and, and some of the other areas of um, Babylon where the land is uh, refill or filling or some other kind of nonsense where they take old garbage and stack up compressed garbage, really. That's basically what it is. But it, but it, fit, it fits, basically. Um, might be just one more sign about it. But anyway, um... My brothers and sisters, uh, just a little teaching on this particular psalm because this is what we do when we go through these sort of crises. We try to fortify, you know, like people take vitamins in a sense. We try to fortify our our psyche as well as our spirit, you understand, and then get some right instruction for our body, you know what I mean? Because in some things it's telling us there should be a preparation, there must be a preparation to come out, you understand, to come out of Babylon before it's too late. So these are some of the first initial steps. There has to be a rebirth of, of being born again. That's the first prerequisite. Cause otherwise, you're not going to feel at home among righteous Africans. You understand? And then, you know, there's Africans who are not righteous who will give you yours. You understand? If you, if you want to play that sort of game. It's not the game that we seek to play. We understand at this, at, this, at this present prophetic time. So, a word to the wise should be sufficient. More to come, brothers and sisters. Uh... A Rastafari, greetings and peace, salam to my brothers and sisters, and shalom, Rastafari.